Parsec 8 modulator in Bitwig Studio is actually an eight step sequencer or modulator. And we have also a step modulator, which is a bit different or works a bit differently. Um, but this video is about this one here, the Parsec 8. So we are limited to eight steps. We can disable each of these steps. And this is not a skip. As you can see here, it still plays the steps, but it just actually ignores the values. So it's not a skip. Um, then we have a hold value here. Um, this basically sustains the previous value of the step. So when we dial in here, um, hold for this one, and we have your value of one, actually you have also value of one on this step here, because we want to preserve the previous value of this step, right? So you can just hold the current value. Uh, then we can dial in your values for each step differently. Uh, positive and negative so it's a bipolar modulator and we have also modulator handle out for each step which is a big difference to the steps modulator where we have just one modulator out for all steps um, then we have here also an indicator where we are in the sequence so we can see what step it's currently playing and then we have here down there we have also some playback options we can limit here the steps to maybe two steps you can see um, also it shortens basically the playback range here so it doesn't play all the other steps it's only iterating over the these uh, first three steps here so you can limit the steps and we have also maximum step size of eight the steps mod has um for instance a, a step max limit of 64 i'm not wrong um then we have here the phase modulation which is basically kind of a playback offset so when we hit stop uh, on the on the transport you can see we stop here at six and when you dial in your phase modulation you can see it's moving to the right so we can offset the current playback position with this um, it's called phase modulation because it's using a phase signal coming from the transport transport uh, is sending out a phase signal which kind of looks like a ramp signal going from zero to plus one and this is used in bitwig of course to position things so uh, with this phase modulation here you can offset the phase uh, value and offset the playback to current playback position if you uh, switch this here to hold for instance um, you go back to the first step and then the phase modulation decides where you are in the in the playback so you can you know modulate this here with a different modulator and change the playback speed or direction at any point in any kind of direction or way you could imagine so back to bar here maybe or maybe eight notes um so yeah we have here a limit we have the phase um phase modulation we have the smoothing option here so this is where you can interpolate between values so we have maybe here a value of one and here we have a value of minus one and this change is pretty drastic right it changes from plus one to minus one instantaneously uh, but when you modulate something, maybe a loudness or a gain knob or something like this, it produces clicks because you you, you change the, the, the modulation so drastically. So you can dial in here smoothing and Bitwig tries to interpolate between these values and make the transition kind of smoother. And I can show you this in a minute, how it looks like in Bitwig here. So when we have maybe... Um, Let's say we modulate or we use two steps here and we modulate here this one this one you can see it switches between these two pretty drastically right when i dial in here smoothing you can see it becomes kind of a nice modulation if you do it too much it doesn't actually move at all So it's a it's a smoothing option um, then back to this menu here um, then we have the playback speed so we can change here in which direction we want to actually play the sequencer so you can see now it's in forward mode now reversed and then we have also ping pong here which alternates between forward and backwards or reversed 
goes back and forth, right? So we have this. We have a looping function, so it stops when we don't disable this. It actually stops after one iteration. Then we have transport here. And these are some playback options. Uh, for instance, transport basically synchronizes the playback of this Parsec A2 to transport. So when we hit stop here, it actually stops to, to playback. If we hit start, then it plays back from the start. It's also synchronizing to the position of your, yeah, where you are in your um, transport here. I think, you can see every time I start from this position, it starts actually in the middle, right? So it not only synchronizes its starting point, it's also synchronizing when it starts uh, to the transport. So this is why it calls the option, of course, transport. Then we have with groove, which is the same as before as transport, but now it actually um, uses also your the global groove option. So when you dial it in, you have some shuffle for all your beats and stuff like this. Um, the modulation also uses that to bring in some swing into the playback here of the Parsec 8. Uh, then we have free running. So the playback doesn't care for anything. It just plays back the uh, sequence here over and over uh, again without caring for anything. So it's just free running. Um, of course, you can use here the speed knob on the speed divisions or units and dial in a different speed. Uh, put the playback start and where it starts, it doesn't care at all. Um, then we have note restart. So you can see it just plays back here um, the sequence, but every time I press a key on my keyboard or input the note with the note clip here, um, it restarts and goes back to the first bar or to, to the first step. So you can restart with the note input um, to the first step. And then we have note random, which does basically the same, but this time, every time you press a key, um, it should restart at a different point. Yeah, it's not really random, but every time you press a key, it you know restarts and brings the playback indicator to a random point in the sequence. Then we have note advance, which completely brings this uh, sequencer to hold, and every time you press a key, you advance to the next step. You can also see here the playback speed is completely disabled, you can't use it. Um, then we have here the speed settings and we have here a dial, so we can just dial in any setting in between um, synchronized steps. We can also use your hertz. We have playback speed here of 1 hertz. And if you dial this down, then it slows down. And if you speed this up, then the playback speed is, is higher. And also kilohertz here, which is audio rate. So we can use this to create some sounds. So for instance, let's use here only two steps. And we modulate here maybe this. And also this. And then we go to minus one. So this should be some kind of square wave. And you can change here the... We can make music or sounds with this. And again, as before, we can use the smoothing to make it this kind of an, oh, let's use an oscilloscope here. So you can see we have your square wave. If you bring in the smoothing, or oh, this one here, can make this kind of rounded. Or we actually can use here three steps maybe. Something like this. Let's see how, how this looks like. So you can go to audio range with this here. Then we have bar, which is super slow. It's actually one. You iterate through one of, this, of these eight bars here. You have exactly passed one bar in your sequence or in your arranger um, when you dialed in one. And 
yeah, as I said, you can divide this here. So let's say you have eight notes here, right? Um, and you hit play. Um, so each step is basically an eight note. But if you dial in here 0 0.5, it's actually twice as fast. So it's 16 notes, even though you are selected your eight notes. So um, it's probably faster to leave this at one and then switch it to 16 notes which has the same effect basically. But you can dial in here some values in between if you want to have some, some speed setting between eight notes and 16 notes, and you can divide this here with this knob, right? So you can also go to my um, to 0 0.25, for instance, something like this, right? Or so, so you can also dial in some dotted things, but you probably want to use here these um, different units for dotted 16 notes, 32 notes, and so on, triplets also. So uh, you can dial this in here, and then you use the speed knob to divide it even further if you want to. And then we have down here, um, below everything, we have pitch to of current note. So this is interesting. It's kind of using kilohertz, where it goes into aud aud audible ranges. Uh, but here you actually can use the MIDI input or the note input of your MIDI keyboard or your note clip to change the playback speed. So if we put this here to pitch, I can play the, on my keyboard, on my MIDI keyboard, and can change the, um, the playback rate here. So you can do kind of a synthesizer with a DC offset device, which is which is more or less there to remove DC offset. But you can also use to make it like an instrument, right? So all we need to do now to actually make this a synthesizer, a monophonic synthesizer, is using here an envelope ADSR, which I also described, I think, in some video before. And every time we press a key on the keyboard here, we can see we have here the ADSR reacting to it. So we use this to change actually the volume or the amount knob here of the Parsec 8. So every time we press a key, we dial in or we bring in the amount and we also change the pitch to the current key of the MIDI keyboard. Let's perfectly nice small little monophonic synthesizer you can do with the Parsec 8 here and also the oscillator itself it's um, yeah it's a trouble oscillator if you want to okay so I described you all these knobs here how this works um, what it does and you find more tips and tricks on or some practical examples on my main channel where it's all about making music instead of describing what the manual says so um, this is only to describe basically what each knob does and how you kind of use all these uh, settings here